Okay, so we've got three passages of scripture here uh, in the unveiling to do the comparison between the authorized and the concordant version. And they're all in the book of the unveiling. So I saved them for today. <clears throat> and then we're going to uh, move on here probably to the conclusion of this article. But it's beautiful. It's been an honor sharing this because... Our brother Norman is uh, blessing so many with this uh, these articles. I've gotten a few requests and I've shared it um, through via email. And anybody else wants them, they can have them. Just send me an email. Um, I did mention already you have to hit the show more button to see what my email address is. Um, so when you find it. Shoot me an email and I will send you these articles of Norman LaBelle's because they're well worth having yourself to be edified yourself. I read them and I'm bringing them to you on my videos, but it's beneficial to have them yourself. So I always say because the material that I have in the library that I've accumulated over the years that God has blessed me with is tremendous. And this is why. He's given me this uh, outlet to share with you. <clears throat> okay, so the book of the unveiling, starting in Revelation 3, 5. He who conquers shall be clad thus with white garments and will not blot, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Unveiling chapter 3, verse 5. The one who is conquering, he shall be clothed in white garments, and under no circumstances will I be erasing his name from the scroll of life. And I will be avowing his name in front of my father and before his messengers. Revelation 13, 8. And all who dwell on earth will worship him, everyone whose name has not been written, before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb that was slain. Unveiling 13.8, and all who are dwelling on the earth will be worshiping it. Everyone whose name is not written in the scroll of life of the Lamb can slain from the disruption of the world. Okay, last one, Revelation 21.27, 20, 21, but nothing unclean shall enter it, nor any one who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Unveiling 2127, and under no circumstances may anything contaminating or one who is making an abomination and a lie be entering into it, except those written in the Lambkin Scroll of Life. Okay, so that is the passages of Scripture. Awesome. <clears throat> In most of the references above, it is clearly using the words written. This should convince us that someone is writing them. Is it God himself or has he delegated this responsibility to others such as these beings? To really grasp the idea I'm trying to convey, I will use a simple human analogy to get my point across. Take our human judicial system based on man-made laws as an example. We have a judge, jury, lawyers, and witnesses. When all the evidence is heard, we arrive at a verdict, acquittal or a condemnation. In God's theoretical kingdom system, he has a role, he has a role of both judge and jury. Other aspects are the same. In human terms, the lawyers advocates, the lawyers advocates either defend or oppose the person on trial. In spiritual, the theatrical, or theocratical terms, we have the Holy Spirit, the advocate, representing man. And we have Satan, the adversary, always pointing fingers, accusing, objecting to, and trying to undermine us in the eyes of the judge. Both advocates present their cases using rules written into law to confirm their ver veracity of what is proposed by the lawyers. Witnesses are, are called to provide an eyewitness account of events. From what is established as facts, the judge can determine when and where a crime, sin, quote unquote, was committed. From this, 
information a judge makes his righteous and just verdict. Also comparable to our human court system is when all stand in respect at the presence of the judge as a judge walks into court. So it is with the 24 elders and four living creatures when they kneel in the presence of God, the judge. Note, I consider the first four observation statements. First, one and a half pages of this article to be logical, scripturally founded, truthfully and seemingly undeniable and irrefutable. The thesis section is built upon what I believe to be four factual observation statements. Some total, I in no way say that this is doctrinal. I'm just proposing a possible and plausible scenario to build on build on the very little information we have about these intriguing beings. Exactly. It doesn't end here. What I propose next is yet another possibility we might ultimately far surpass the role of these elders in their service to God as spiritual scribes and eternal time keepers as explained above. So that is the members of the body of Christ. I do throw this in here myself. We are not judged according to our acts. We were chosen prior to the disruption of the cosmos in Christ before any other being came into being, including the adversary himself. Sin was not in the universe when we were already chosen before the disruption. This is why at the days of Christ, it's a requital, not a judgment according to acts. We are the presiders, the members of the body of Christ at the great white throne. Human beings will stand before us. We are going through our experience here on this earth as a training ground for a celestial, for a celestial allotment. So as far as judge is concerned, we're not being judged like the rest. We're actually being adjudicated now, I believe, through this experience and corrected. We're realizing our calling. This is why we have to come through what we come through. So that's just a side note from my own perspective. And it's scriptural that we were chosen prior to any other creation in Christ. I will attempt to make the case for the, these 24 elders actually being collectively the one true counsel of his will. Just like we are the collectively, we are collectively members of the one true body of Christ, being actual members designated with a purpose and in complete accord with the will of God. I will now term these beings collectively as a council. And this is what we will finish up tomorrow. The council and conclusion. So we know if you are a member of the body of Christ and you are called to be a member of, of the body of Christ, the deep truths that are in Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, where the meat is, the spiritual meat, that's when you come into that realization of who you actually are. So any circumstances during your life, these are necessary experiences for the training ground prior to the snatching away prior to our celestial, taking up our celestial allotment, which we were actually chosen for prior to our birth. We never had no say in it. We know this. And no other human being has a say in their position, whatever position it is, whether they're a vessel of honor or dishonor, makes no difference. This is God's absolute choice. He places everything perfectly in the script. And we are placed perfectly in the script because guess what? We are the ones who are going to be there at the great white throne adjudicating. <clears throat> There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. In Romans, it says that as clear as day. So get that for yourself. And have a wonderful, peaceful day in the Lord. Grace and peace.